Hi, and welcome to the Sunday School Breakdown. I'm your host, I'm Wilma Murphy, and I'm one of the Sunday School teachers here at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 2870 Petland Drive. That's in East Point, Georgia. The 303, the 4, and the 4. Our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. St. Eugene Taylor Sr. He's the one closest to me. And our co-pastor is the Reverend Christopher E. Taylor Sr. And guys, we appreciate you tuning in yet again to another edition of the Sunday School Breakdown. Oh yeah, the world's most unique Sunday School experience, bar none. Also known as the SSBD. We thank you dearly and severely for taking time out of your busy schedules to tune in to watch the lesson and participate. Did you have the answers to the question on last week? Did you? Guys, do me a favor. Call your friends right now. I want you to tweet them, email them, send them a text, and just let them know that the Sunday School Breakdown, oh yes, guys, it is indeed about to go down. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Today's lesson, I almost said this is a good lesson. Oh, I struggle with that. This is a good lesson, guys. Okay, I gotta do me, right? This is a good lesson. Today's lesson comes from the book of Job. Oh, I know you guys know about Job. Or do you? I promise we'll learn more today. Book of Job, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10, then 20 through 22. Bildad misspeaks God's justice. Now, Bildad is one of Job's friends, one of his boys. But Bildad... Well, oh, before I get into the lesson, I see the praying hands. Oops, about to get caught up in this good lesson today. How are you feeling, by the way? Me? Oh, come on. I feel fantastic. Excellent, even. The praying hands. We're going to use one of the prayers from my brother that sends these to me every day. And sometimes he know I need much prayer. Sometimes he sends me two in the same day. The prayers of the righteous are better than much. Let us pray. Dear God, we want to use our time that you have given to us to honor and to praise you. You have done incredible things in our lives and in the lives of those around us. One day, all the people will know of your power and glory. But until then, please use us to live in such a way that draws people to you. And we thank you for your unending grace and mercy. It is in the name of thine Son, Jesus Christ, we do pray and we ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, this is St. Paul Missionary about the church. Yes, remember, this is the building that house churches. You are the church. So I challenge you, I charge you, be the best church you can be. You see, after all, Jesus is coming back for the church, not the building. You be the church. Facebook Live, 10 o'clock Eastern time, that is. That's the Facebook link. Please join in virtually. We do appreciate you dearly 
and severely. Oh, it's Black History Month. Isn't it weird that the shortest month of the year have all these heavy holidays? We got Black History Month, we got President's Day, we got Valentine's Day, we have the Super Bowl. They just put so much stuff in our month. Happy birthday, fellow Februarians. But CTE month. Who asked me what is CTE? Come on, career and technical education. In the old days, they used to call this trade school. You would go to a school where you would learn a trade. You can become a carpenter just like Christ. Engineers, programmers. In fact, I went to a school. I needed a special class. It, it was offered at a college called Griffin Tech. And I went to it. That was a CTE. You know the truck drivers? Hmm. Knowing the electricians, maybe they learned that trade from a CTE. So happy CTE month. They are vital, those skills, those talents, that workmanship is vital to our community. Ah, to the lesson. Justice and adversity. Remember the word adversity means to go against, right? To be contrary of. Here we are, unit three. And guys, this is lesson 12. We're gonna have this lesson and one more and we're done with winter semester. And then we'll start our spring school. Now, I want you to pass the class, so please, please take good notes. Remember, I don't want your parents calling me saying that you fail Sunday school. <laughs> Let us get started. Most of us know about Job, right? But just in case you don't, this lesson today will be broken down in such a way that when we're done, You'll know all that you need to know today about Job and his plight. I want you to put yourselves in the position of Job. Therefore, our lesson starts at the, in the book of Job, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10, and verses 20 through 22. However, I think we need to start at the beginning. What do you say? So, Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, oh, wait, 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 wait. Time out. I went too far back in the beginning. I meant to say the beginning of Job. Job 1 and 1. I really need to call my therapist, man. This silliness, I can't help myself. Job 1 and 1. That was a man. Meet me at the wall. Oh, but if you don't feel like walking, it's okay. Just look closely. It's okay. The rest of you, meet me at the wall. Come on. We're walking, yes indeed we're talking. Job 1 and 1, the King James Version. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was, what, what did it say? He was what? He was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. He's getting this label because he feared God and hated 
evil. Oh, I wish God would say that about me. Was perfect and upright. Oh, what a heavy label to have. Isn't this the label that we all wish to ascertain? It's by God's grace that we will get there. But look, two things you need to know and uh, totally accept to get there. You got to fear God and turn your back on evil. Now, Job has accomplished that. Keep that in mind. God is saying he's perfect and upright. Still in chapter one of Job, let's look at a couple more verses. I'm going back to the wall. You can stay here. Just you stay there. Job 1, verses 6 and 7. Remember, in Job 1 and 1, in the beginning, Job was found to be perfect and upright by God himself. That's not a labor that Job put upon himself. God gave him that. But look at 6 and 7, Job 1. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, what? Satan was presenting himself before God? Satan was in the presence of God? And Satan also came among them. So Satan was one of the sons of God. Remember being kicked out of heaven? And the Lord said to Satan, So Satan, from where do you come from? Why are you here? And Satan answered the Lord and said, <laughs> from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Job 1, 6 and 7. Therefore, Satan was in God's presence. Now, what was Satan walking to and fro on the earth for? He was just strolling about the earth looking for something to get into. It appears that Satan had idle hands. And we know that idle hands are the devil's workshop. Workshop. Kind of goes along with the CTE, maybe. <laughs> Verse 8. I'm going back. You can stay. Here's what God said. This is the MEV version, the modern English version. And God said to Satan, remember Satan just strolling about, looking for something to do. And the Lord said to the adversary, Have you considered my servant? Job, Job was a servant of God. That there is none like him on the earth. And he's blameless. And an upright man. Remember Job 101? So Satan is looking for someone to mess with. Now, 
I didn't see between verses six and seven where Satan asked God for somebody to mess with. Also, God says not only that he's blameless, perfect, and upright man, he fears God. Oh, those are the qualifications for receiving perfection. And he avoids evil. Look at that second line, guys. Have you considered my servant, Job? Now, I could be wrong, but I did not see Satan ask for Job. He said he was just strolling about on the earth to and fro. And God said, I know what you want, Satan. You see, God knows all, even the mind of Satan. God offered Job to Satan. Now for you purist, you Bible study purist, for you theologians, tune out the next 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Here we go. In layman terms, it appears to me that God is placing a hedge bet on Job. He's hinging that Job will be able to withstand whatever Satan throws his way. Why? Because he loves God, he fears God, and he hates evil. So Satan is evil. And God is willing to bet on Job. Whew. This was in heaven. The plight of Job started in heaven. Think about some of the things that you are going through right now. And you don't know where they started or how they came about. It just may be possible, just possible that Satan was walking to and fro and God offered up you, me. Maybe that's why we go through. But God is confident that Satan cannot break Job. We need to be confident that he will not break us. Watch how this story unfolds. So now, game on. Satan takes the challenge. And Job, not knowing what's going on, will be facing the test of life. Now look at that. I didn't mean to get this deep before we got into the book. But look at this. You see that? caption facing the test of life is plural that means we're going to have more than one and also it doesn't say that totally Job would be facing the test it said the test of life which means our lives would be affected our lives will be tested game on Job chapter 8 Verse 1. And then answered Bill Dad, the Shuhite, and said, Now, Bill Dad is a friend of Job. <laughs> oh, yes. He's one of Job's boys. 
You see, they heard about the suffering that was going on with Job. Job had lost his children. He had lost his wealth. His body had all these boils on it. And Job, it would hurt to sit. It hurt to stand. It hurt to lay down. It was just, Job was just in nonstop pain. So his boys are coming to comfort him. But the problem is, Satan has talked to his boys along the way. Of course, the boys don't know that. So they're going to offer comforting advice to Job. Bildad, which names actually means friend. And yet he's a friend of Job, but let's watch how he works. <laughs> The priest here said, be gone, Satan. You need Jesus. That's what we need to say. Be gone, Satan. We need Jesus. When we're going through our tests and trials and our tribulations like Job is undertaking now. And verse 2. Bill Dad say, how long will you speak this nonsense, Job? How long will thou speak these words? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Hopefully the verse is showing right about there. Bildad is checking Job because the other two, there were three friends, by the way. There were Bildad, there was Eliphaz, and there was Zophar. The other two have already spoken. And Job rebuked them, and Job debated lightly with them. They were telling Job, you are to blame for all of this. And Job was defending himself. So Bildad laid back a little bit. But now it's his turn to speak. And he said that, Job, how long would thou speak these things? And how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? He said, Joel, what you're speaking this? <laughs> I'm not going to mess with that. <laughs> I'm sure you all seen this, right? So he said, the words that are coming out of your mouth, Joel, are unclean. <laughs> Let's move on from that. And also, the things that you're saying, Joel, is like strong wind. Joel, you're talking loud. But brother, you're saying nothing. You're speaking hot air, Joe. Your words are worthless. So how long are you going to continue to speak in this manner? But these are from his boys, his inner circle. Giving him comforting counsel. Job has lost all of his children, 10 children. His property, Job had oxen and cattle and sheep and all kinds of things, goats. And he lost it all. And his children. And these are types of words that are coming from his boys to console him. There's a thin line between love and hate. The friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. Hmm. Friends like these who needs enemies. So they're checking Job. Telling Job you messed up, man. Verse 1 and 1 said that you were perfect and that you were upright. But obviously that is not the case. You see, they don't know what's going on in the background. They don't know what God and Satan did in heaven. God made a bet. He bet that Job would never, never turn his back on his God. 
Now that's a mighty testimony on Job from God. Regardless of what he's going through, he hasn't given up on his God. And Bill that goes on. Verse 3. Doth God pervert judgment? Or doth the Almighty pervert justice? Bill Dad is saying, oh, only if you feel like it. Come on. Come on. Bill Dad is giving Job a rhetorical question. Bill Dad is saying, Job, does God pervert justice? Does God pervert his own word? The word pervert simply means to twist, to go opposite of, to flip. Mm, flip. And to go in opposite direction. God's word is the word. He knows what Job is going to say. So basically, he's setting Job up to say that Job, you are guilty. You are the fault. You are the reason for your family's suffering and for your own suffering. Because Job was telling them constantly, guys, I haven't done anything. I haven't turned my back on God. I love him just as much today as I ever have. But something is going on. I'm being chastised. I'm being tested. And Job is right. He's being tested because God is proving to Satan just how rooted in the word Job truly is. And verse 4. Build that whose name means what? Yes, whose name means friend. Really? Build that. Verse 4. He say, if thy children have sinned against him and he has cast them away for their transgressions. Now see, Build that is going a little low now. See, it's one thing to talk about the person, to talk about Job. But you don't bring two people into the equation ever, right? You can talk about me, but two things you don't do. First of all, what is it? You don't say nothing about my mama and my children. Oh yeah, you got a problem when you go there. Where my old school is at? Am I right? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I'll let you get away with saying some things about me, but don't go there. Forget about Job 1 and 1. Not only that you're not perfect, well, your children aren't perfect either. Oh, yeah. And therefore, God cast them away. God killed all of them. The children have gotten punished for being disobedient in the presence of God. The children, all of them, have died because they were against, they transgressed, I think that's the word he used, because of their transgressions against God. But we know, we know, Job 1, 6, 7, and 8, we know that the hand of Satan was at the control. You see, Satan had asked God, what can I not do to Job? And God said, you can do so many things, but 
You can't kill Job. So the devil did what? He killed all ten of his children. Oh, oh my goodness. And then your friend come and say, it's their fault. It's your fault. But the red hand of Satan was controlling the weather, the atmosphere, and caused the houses. Yeah, and killed all the children. I'm getting mad with this lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Where are we? <laughs> Birch fire. They're <laughs> making me mad now. Yeah. Talking about that man's children. Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't go there. <laughs> Birch fire. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Allow me to compose myself. Verse 5. If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes and make thy supplications to the Almighty. Now, build that is telling Job. Job, if thou would go and seek God. But time simply means to do it quickly, do it early, do it rapidly. And make supplication. Feel that and say, go and submit yourself before the Lord. Confess your sins, repent of your sins. And Job, maybe the God of heaven will make everything all right. But Job is consistently saying, I haven't turned my back on God. I'm just going through because God just wants me to go through. But his friends were persistent and believed that Job, you have done something to upset God. But you see, we know the story. God has so much confidence in Job that he just know Job would never let him down. I wonder if God has that type of confidence in me or in you. Let us ponder that for a second. Hmm. And verse six. Oh, it's on the board, so it won't be here, okay? Verse six. If thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitations of thy righteousness prosperous. Job, if you truly weren't pure, Job, if you really were upright, then surely by now God would have awakened for thee and make not just you, but your habitation around you prosperous and righteous. So Job chapter 1 verse 1 must not have been accurate. That must have been a misprint or a misspeak in the verse. After all, this lesson is called what? Build that misspeaks God's justice. He's looking at God's justice from a man's point of view and not from a heavenly perspective. We need to be careful 
of how we talk to people. You see, Bildad, Zophar, and Eliphaz are almost coming around like they are not consoling Job, but actually judging Job. Be careful. In verse 7, you see, Job, your beginning was small. Yet the latter end should be greatly increased. The verse is on the wall. Will you? We're walking. Yes, indeed, we're talking. Bill that doesn't know it. But in his correctness, a Job, verse 7 says that though your beginning was small, yet latter end, your latter end, should greatly increase. This is prophetic. This is true. Yes. Job is going to be increased. Now, he's not a prophet of God. But he having a prophetic moment. You see, that's a beanstalk. Started that small. And it grew to be a huge giant of a plant. Well, so with our beginnings, many of us started that small. Yet it was God that gave the increase. Bildad is making a prophetic statement and he doesn't even realize it. In verse 8. For inquired, I pray thee, of the former age, should be right about there, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. He's asking Job. He's inquiring of Job. Job, maybe you should go and inquire of our forefathers. Here's Moses. And Moses with the tablets that God tablets, the tables, the commandment. Bill Dad is saying, maybe we need to go and seek the counsel from the Father. And maybe Job should. Because the counsel from his friends, his boys, the late Whitney Houston would say, it's whack. You see verses 9 and 10. You see, the reason Bildad suggests that Job go and seek counsel from the fathers, the forefathers, verse 9, for we are but of yesterday and we know nothing but upon our days on earth are a shadow. Not even a full figure yet. Our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding is limited. He's telling the truth. In verse 10, shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter the words of their heart? Go and get higher counseling. Find someone with a higher calling to seek counsel from. But the late Chas with Bozeman, remember in the movie? He would die temporarily once he took the serum. And he would go and have counsel with the others. 
his father and the other elders. He was seeking counsel. This is what Bildad is suggesting to our friend Job. Can you connect with Job? Are you going through something right now? Sickness, pain, do you feel like you're suffering? We all can relate to Job because sometimes we just don't understand why we're going through what we're going through. And then there are other times that we know exactly why we go through the things that we go through. Once again, we all have a touch of Job in us. We all will go through some things, regardless of who you are, regardless of your status. And verse 20, Bildad is still telling Job, trying to break down God's words to Job. He's doing his own interpretation of God's words. He goes on to tell Job in verse 20, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evil doers. Not necessarily accurate. No. Not accurate at all. As Andy Griffin would say, not at all. You see, In Matthew 5 and 45, it says, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil. Mm -hmm. Neither will he help the evildoers. That's not accurate. He allows the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And yet, he sinneth the rain on the just and on the unjust. Which simply means that Frankie Beverly would put it this way. There will be some joy and pain. There will be some sunshine and there will be some rain regardless of who you are, whether you're good or evil. Evil people will have some good days, some good earthly days, that is. And good people will have some bad days. That reminds me of the song when our choir members love to sing at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, by Reverend uh, Paul Jones. He would put it this way, which is perfect. He would say that I've had some good days. Now I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days. And oh yes, I've had some sleepless nights. But when I take a look around, and I think things over when I realize that my good days outweigh my bad days. Therefore, say it with me, I won't complain. That's what's happening in verse 20. You're going to have good days and you're going to have some bad days regardless of your situation, your status, whether you're good or evil. Just uh, unjust. So verse 20 that our buddy Bill Dad is saying is not 
quite right for Job. He's trying to say that, Job, you're going through this because you weren't perfect in Job 1 and 1. Otherwise, this situation would not come to you. That is not the case, guys. We're going to have good days and bad days on this earth. In verse 21, Till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. That's another prophetic statement Bill Dad is making. Once we go through what we need to go through, there's joy and there's laughter on the other side. Of through the young lady Ezra Ray, great actress, the late Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, <laughs> I tell you, no respect. <laughs> and Danny Glover. Oh boy, he made me so mad in the color purple. Ooh. An excellent actor. In verse 22, and we're going to walk right up out of here. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of thy wicked shall come to naught. Not means nothing. Remember Jeff Robodine for the old schoolers like me? Not from not leaves. Yes, I heard you. I heard you. Not. <laughs> yeah, you silly with me. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, once again, build that as being prophetic and doesn't realize it. The problem with this statement is that Bildad is thinking about other people. They will be brought to shame by God when he lifts Job back up or lifts you back up or lifts me back up when we're down. Others will be brought to shame because some people are Haters, they that hate thee, haters, will be made to look foolish when God brings you through that which you are going through. On the other side, a through. Behind me. Bildad, Eliphaz, and Zophar need to be the men in the mirror. They need to check themselves before they wreck themselves. The problem with haters is that haters are consistent. Haters are going to hate. And the former president just stop hating all the time. Take a hate break. Joe's boys his inner circle. They said a lot of things to Job in several different ways. They even suggested that Job go and pray and repent and confess to God and maybe God will hear his prayers and relieve him from his suffering. 
Now that's good advice. But you know the one thing I did not hear? Where Bill Dad said, Job, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. You see, sometimes, guys, we need to pray for others that are going through. I'm sure they probably have prayed for themselves. Yes, that's always a great thing to be able to pray for yourself. But sometimes the prayers of others collectively brings about a change. They had lots of advice for Job, but that one piece of advice or one action they failed to take. And guys, that's our lesson for today. And that, 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 that's all folks. Thank you, Parker. Okay. <laughs>